Hi, welcome to Acid and Bases Part 3. My name is Dr. English. Today we're going to talk about the Arrhenius definition of bases. Specifically, we're going to look at the Arrhenius definition of bases, Table L, practice dissociating bases, the nature of the hydroxide ion, alternative acid base theories, and finally a little bit of practice at the end. So let's talk about the Arrhenius definition of bases. The formulas and names of some common bases are given on table L of your reference table. So you want to make sure that you know the location of this, that you've looked over the formulas, and the accompanying names. A base is an electrolyte that yields hydroxide ions, OH-1, as the only negative ion in an aqueous solution. Commonly found as ionic compounds between metals from group 1 and some from group 2. So here's an example. Sodium hydroxide ionizes in water to form sodium and hydroxide ions. So we see that sodium is coming from group 1 and it breaks down to individual ions. Now let's do some practice. Dissociate the bases into component ions. So the first one is KOH. K we know is coming from group 1. So in water it would be K plus 1. And we're going to assume that all of these have aqueous symbols at the end. K plus 1, and then we have a single OH, so this would be OH minus 1. CaOH2, Ca is coming from group 2, so my positive ion would be Ca plus 2, and then I have two hydroxide ions, so this would be 2 OH minus 1 to keep it electrically neutral. Then finally, RBOH, rubidium is coming from group 1, so R B plus 1, and it's in a 1 to 1 ratio with the hydroxide, so OH minus 1. Let's talk about the nature of the hydroxide ion. The presence of the hydroxide ion results in bases having their characteristic properties. Alcohols are organic compounds that contain the alcohol hydroxide group, but are not bases, not bases. Alcohols do not ionize in water to yield a hydroxide ion and thus are not electrolytes. Alcohols can be easily recognized by the fact that they begin with the element carbon. So for example, methanol, CH3OH. If we have liquid methanol and we put it in water, it's still going to remain as methanol. And remember that one carbon is coming from the meth part at the beginning. Now you might say, well, what exactly do you mean? Why isn't it breaking down into a hydroxide ion? Well, think about it. We have carbon, this carbon right here, three hydrogens coming off of it, one, two, and then finally three, and then this OH group, which in this case is going to be an alcohol. Now, the difference between electronegativity values between the carbon and the oxygen are not so big that the oxygen can pull itself away from the carbon. Because the electronegativity values here are relatively close, the carbon in its covalent bond has a pretty firm grasp on that oxygen. So it's not going to let that oxygen go away. It's not going to let it ionize. Therefore, it's a covalent bond and not ionic, and it's not going to be able to release this hydroxide ion into solution, which is why it's an alcohol, and therefore it's not a base. Now let's talk about some alternative acid-base theories. The Arrhenius definition of acids and bases is limited to aqueous solutions only. Acids and bases do exist outside of the aqueous solution, so alternative acid-base theories exist. One theory states that an acid is a hydrogen ion H plus 1 donor, and a base is a hydrogen ion H plus 1 acceptor. This is known as the Bronsted-Lowry acid-base theory. So in this theory, all Arrhenius acids are hydrogen ion donors. In other words, when that acid ionizes, it's always going to produce a hydrogen ion. So HCl in water will produce hydrogen ions. HNO3 in water will produce hydrogen ions. And this is a good thing because that means the definition for the Arrhenius acids, which we've already learned, also applies to the Bronsted-Lowry definition of acid. The Bronsted-Lowry base theory defines a base as any substance that accepts a proton. A hydrogen ion. This definition expands the number of substances that are considered bases beyond what is included in the Arrhenius definition. A base that accepts a hydrogen ion must, 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 must 
have a lone pair so that a coordinate covalent bond can form between the accepted hydrogen ion and a base. That's why ammonia, NH3, is considered a base under this alternative theory because we have ammonia, NH8. Because if you look on table L, you'll see NH3 ammonia listed. That's because ammonia has this lone pair up here. It has the ability to pick up a hydrogen ion. And anything that has the ability to pick up a hydrogen ion, like in this case, is considered a base. Because ultimately, what we can form is ammonium. Ammonium. So we have that lone pair at the top. And then we have this hydrogen up here and there's my coordinate covalent bond plus one there's my coordinate covalent bond right there so this is ammonium this is actually known as an acid in the bronsted lowry theory but the big thing that you need to walk away from is that ammonia is considered a base because of the presence of this lone pair another example that you might see of a substance that's considered a bronsted lowry base is water so here we have a water molecule and because water has two lone pairs, it can, in certain situations, be considered a base. And the reason why is because we know that neutral water molecule can hook up with another hydrogen ion and form hydronium. We have done this before. So there's my lone pair, there's my lone pair, there's my neutral water molecule. I have this hydrogen ion, which is positive, comes over, it hooks up right here. We form that hydronium ion, which we know is classified as acidic. But water as a neutral molecule is considered as a base because it has the ability to accept a hydrogen ion. So these are the two primary examples that you need to be familiar with in terms of alternative acid-base theories and what can be expected to be a base. Now let's do a little bit of practice. What I'd like you to do is read each of the questions, see if you can answer them, come back and check your work. Welcome back, let's see how you did. Which compound releases hydroxide ions in an aqueous solution? So we have CH3COOH, that's our Ku group. This is actually an organic acid. Organic acid, so this is not a base, not a base. CH3OH, this is methanol methanol this is an organic alcohol so this is not an acid or a base and it's because this OH group right here is attached to that carbon so this is not a base HCl that's an acid that is hydrochloric acid and that's listed in your reference table so nope finally we have potassium hydroxide this is the correct answer this is actually listed on table L of your reference table, so you could check your work. Let's look at the other question. According to one acid-base theory, a water molecule acts as a base when the molecule donates a hydrogen ion, accepts a hydrogen ion, donates a hydroxide ion, and accepts a hydroxide ion. Well, C and D are out because the Bronsted-Lowry theory of acids and bases only deals with the transfer of hydrogen ions. So we're looking at what is a base. If you chose B, you are correct because water can accept a hydrogen ion because of the presence of the lone pair and be considered basic. So what did you learn in this tutorial? We went over the Arrhenius definition of bases. We looked at the use of table L. We practiced some dissociation with bases. We talked about the nature of the hydroxide ion. We looked at some alternative acid-base theories. And finally, we did a little bit of practice at the end. Need more help? Feel free to contact me. Have a great day.